All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you how to integrate by parts, but in higher dimensions. And in order to do so, let me motivate this a little bit with single variable calculus. So motivation. Suppose you have two functions f and g defined on some interval, let's say a comma b. Then if you want to integrate, for instance, f double prime times g, then integration by parts simply says the following. This is f prime times g from a to b minus integral of f prime g prime over a comma b. Now it turns out in higher dimensions, the formula is almost exactly the same, except we need to define f double prime, f prime, and f prime g prime. You'll see why. So in higher dimensions, what you have here is still two functions f and g, but not defined on an interval, but defined over a set w with boundary partial w. And then the question is, what does this formula become? On the one hand, this integral is just the integral over w. g is still g. And the question is, what becomes of f double prime? So what we would like here is some scalar that says second derivatives of f. Now, uh, you can't just do the Hessian because that would be a matrix. So because you want a scalar instead, what you would have to use is what's called the Laplacian. So Laplacian of f times g. And I like to remind you what is the Laplacian. So Laplace means the place in France, in French, by the way. And there is a place in France literally called Laplace, which is quite hilarious. But the Laplace in all this is, is just fx1x1 x1 plus fx2x2 x2 plus dot 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 plus fxn xn. So kind of the sum of the same second derivatives, which, you know, looks a lot like f double prime, but in this case in higher dimensions. Now, this thing here, well, what is the analog of integrating at A and at B? Well, notice in the one dimensional case, the points A and B are just the boundary of your interval. So it should make sense that instead of using A to B, you just integrate on the boundary. So the next step is, well, integral over the boundary. F prime, I'll talk about this a little bit. You would like to see the gradient times g, but the problem is this is a vector. And we would like to have a scalar instead of the vector. So I'll come back to that in a second. But because we're integrating on the boundary, we have to use the surface integral, so ds. And then minus integral over the whole set, w. And then f prime, well, you just replace it with the gradient. g prime, you replace it with the gradient. And again, since you won't have a scalar, but we have two vectors here, you just dot the two. Now, this is all in good, except now the question is, what in the world would we put instead of the f here? What we really would like is some sort of a number or a scalar that says derivative of f on the boundary. And so in order to do this, we need to replace df by, drum roll, the normal derivative. Yes, so that was the cliffhanger, by the way, in another video. But let me explain what the normal derivative partial f over partial nu is. Again, suppose you have this w and then with boundary partial w, then if the boundary is nice enough, at every point, there's an outward facing unit normal vector. 
again, not Möbius or anything, then the um, normal derivative is simply defined as the gradient, so df, dotted with the outward facing unit normal vector. So in, in other words, it's a directional derivative of f in the direction of the outward unit, outward facing unit normal vector. And I've done a separate video on that, telling you the significance of this. And the awesome thing is, once we have that, we finally have our integration by parts formula, which let me write this here again. So the integral of the Laplacian of f times g dx becomes the integral over the boundary of the normal derivative, again, a scalar, times g surface measure minus integral over w of of df dotted with dg. It's kind of dj pi m in the house, but rather dg pi m in the integral. <laughs> and ta-da, this is your uh, higher dimensional integration by parts formula. Woo. And you may wonder why is this useful it is quintessential in PDEs. And in fact, let me use this to illustrate what's called the energy method. Let me show you, for instance, that the only solution of the PDE, Laplacian equals u on equals zero on w and u equals zero on the boundary is u equals zero. In other words, the only function u, which is, quite, which is harmonic, and is zero on the boundary, is the zero function. All right, so how do you show this? On the one hand, consider the Laplacian of u and multiply this by u and integrate on your set w. On the one hand, because Laplacian of u equals zero, this whole thing becomes zero. On the other hand, by integrating by parts, IBP, this becomes the integral over the boundary. Now, this Laplacian becomes a normal derivative times u, the surface measure, minus integral over your set of, now again, you transfer one derivative, du dotted with du, dx. But remember, by assumption, u equals zero on the boundary. So this thing also disappears. And then in the end, what you left with is the following. Zero equals minus integral over your region of du dotted with du, which is the same thing as length of du squared. And uh, what do we know? This is zero, but this is less than or equal to zero. So the only way this could be, this negative thing could be zero is if du is identically equal zero on w. And if the derivative of a function is always zero, this means the function is constant. But look, now what we have, we have, this is u equals to a constant inside, and remember u equals zero on the boundary. So the only way it could be continuous up to the boundary is if this constant is zero. So ultimately you get that uh, u, is, u is identically equal to the zero function, which we wanted to show. And again, as I said, this shows actually uniqueness of solutions of Poisson's equation. So minus partial u equals f on your region, and then u equals g on the boundary. Why does that show uniqueness? Because suppose u and v are two solutions, then you would consider the difference u minus v. I don't want to write w because I use this for w. Then what happens is it turns out if you do the calculation, that minus Laplacian of u squiggled equals zero, and u squiggled equals zero on the boundary. And by what we've shown before, the only way this could happen 
is if u squiggled equals identically zero, which means u minus v is identically equal zero, which means u is identically equal to v. So it does show uniqueness of this, which again is a great application of integration by parts. And similarly, what you can show, you can show uniqueness of solutions to the heat equation. So ut equals Laplace, you know, u plus f, for instance. Here, you still multiply by u and you use the same thing. And similarly, you can also show uniqueness of solutions of the wave equation. But this time, what you do here again, you multiply it by u, integrate by parts. Here, you multiply by ut and integrate by parts. Now, uh, this formula, it's sometimes called Green's first formula. And I just wanted to tell you, just in case you're interested, there's something called Green's second formula, which simply is as follows. So it's easier to derive than to memorize. So if you do integration, if you do Laplace in of u times v and you integrate by parts, that is again integral of the normal derivative times v minus integral of over w of du dotted with dv. But then the thing is you can just do the same spiel again. Namely, you can integrate by parts again. And what you get is uh, this piece is still the same, partial u over partial nu times v minus. So um, what becomes here, you just raise this by one. So minus mm, integral over the boundary of I think u normal derivative of v. So partial v over partial nu okay, over the surface. And um, you have to do minus minus, so plus integral over w of, now there's no more derivative u, but then there's this Laplacian v. And so what do we get? We get that the integral of Laplacian of u times v equals to this boundary term plus integral of u times Laplacian of v. So if you subtract, you simply get the following quite neat formula, integral of Laplacian of u times v minus u Laplacian of v equals integral over the boundary of the normal derivatives, v minus u Laplacian of v times u, ds. And that's sometimes called Green's second formula. It's kind of neat. All it says is just replace the Laplacians with the normal derivatives and you get the same formula. And this is useful sometimes for deriving uh, Green's functions, which I might do if you beg me. <laughs> right. Last but not least, you might ask, well, how do you prove this? And it's surprisingly easy to prove because just consider the following, V times the gradient of U. This is a vector. So in particular, we can just take the divergence. Now, what is the divergence? Remember, you take each component. So the ith component is V u x i, and you differentiate with respect to x i. And what this becomes by the product loop, this is the sum of V x i u x i plus V times u x i x i. Now, what is this sum? This is just dv dotted with du. Literally by definition of the dot product. And this is just v times sum of the u x i's, which is Laplacian of u. So in other words, what do we get in the end? We get that v Laplacian of u, or if you want, uh, Laplacian of u times v equals to this divergence thing, divergence of, um, if you want, uh, v times du minus dv or du dotted with dv. So again, that's 
divergence equals to this plus this. So this equals to divergence minus that. And of course, you may have guessed, all we need to do now is integrate. So integrate all sides with respect to W. Then on the one hand, what we get is precisely this uh, Laplacian term. Now, if you integrate a divergence, remember there's this beautiful theorem, literally called the divergence theorem, which says that this becomes the integral of the boundary of whatever we have here, V du dotted with the outward facing unit normal vector. So this, yes, minus, again, same thing, du dotted with dv. And what is this? Literally by definition, that's the normal derivative. So in the end, we do get our integration by parts formula, which says this integral of Laplace in u times v equals integral over the boundary du over d nu times v ds minus integral over w of du dotted with dv. How fun is that? So I hope you like this little exploration into the world of higher dimensions. If you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.